Good evening, good evening, one and all. Welcome to City Council meeting here, 29th of April, 7 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to ask everybody to please rise for an invitation to pledge of allegiance. Let us bow our heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us a spring season, a season of renewal, a season of growth. May we renew our love for the land, the sea, and the air, for which we thank you. May we grow in our care for others. May the spring bring the citizens of this city closer to you in everything we do. We ask for your guiding hand this evening. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Great. Please call the roll. Councilmember Berger? Here. Councilmember Patelli? Here. Councilmember Buchanan? Here. Councilmember Carroll? Here. Councilmember Perens? Here. Councilmember Harrington? Here. Councilmember Loftus? Yo. Councilmember Ward? Mm -hmm. Notified us that he was not going to be able to attend. Mayor Cronin? Present. Administrator Tucker? Here. And Attorney Harris? Here. Very good. Uh, our next order of business on the you got, got your station, you got the amended agenda. The original one had two and two, so now we're going to two and three. Uh, on item two, we're going to have appointment of administration of both of no employees. May I have a motion to appoint? Second. Second. <laughs> I am there quick. <laughs> After ways and means, we're going to be <laughs> Officer Crockett, Reynolds. Um, Postel and Zimmerman. All right, so motion and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Now, since we have the almost the entire police force here, we're going to see how flexible they are. You can, I'm going to start with Officer Zimmerman. Z is not normally called first. <laughs> Stand up here. Are the left hand, right hand a bit? I think so. There you go. Left hand. Just, just repeat after me. I, Kurt Zimmerman. I, Kurt Zimmerman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. I am duly qualified. According to the ordinances of the city of Iowa County. To, according to the ordinances of the city of Iowa To perform the duty. Perform the duty. Of the position to which I have been selected. To the position I have been selected. And that I will. I will. To the best of my abilities. That's my Discharge the duties there are. Discharge the duties of that. So help me God. So help me God. Welcome to the team. Thank you. This is North Charleston. He's been uh, working in law enforcement for a number of years at North Charleston, Mount Pleasant, and Dorchester County Sheriff. So, who wants to be left next? Next. That's Reynolds. Mr. President. Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> You're close, Mayor. <laughs> Tired to follow that. Hi, <laughs> Dylan Reynolds. Hi, Dylan Reynolds. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I'm duly qualified. That I'm duly qualified according to the ordinances. According to the ordinances. To the city of Alabama. To the city of Alabama. Perform the duties. Of the duties of the position of the position to which I've been selected to the position which I've been selected and that I will and that I will to the best of my abilities to the best of my abilities discharge the duties thereof discharge the duties thereof so help me God so help me God welcome Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. graduates you know so I will, um, you know a good part of this island is represented by the Citadel alumni, so you're going to have a lot of good folks. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the team. Amanda. There you go. Mike, pick that up. I am Amanda Postel. I am Amanda Postel. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. According to the ordinances. According to the ordinances. The city of Alabama. The city of Alabama. To perform the duties. To perform, 
perform the duties of the position of the position which I've been selected for which I've been selected and that I will and that I will to the best of my abilities to the best of my abilities discharge the duties thereof discharge the duties thereof so help me God so help me God that wasn't hard was it? no, no. <laughs> criminal justice at Trident Tech. All right. Very good. Welcome to the team. And last but not least, Gina Crockett. There you go. <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Hi, Sheena Crockett. Hi, Sheena Crockett. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. And I am duly qualified. I am duly qualified. According to the ordinances. According to the ordinances. Of the city of Battle Palms. The city of Battle Palms. To perform the duties. To perform the duties. Of the position. Of the position. To which I have been selected. To which I have been selected. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge the duties thereof. Discharge the duties thereof. So help me God. So help me God. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome to the Council, uh, members of the audience, uh, officers in the department. Uh, about a month ago, I was approached by uh, John Keelan, an employee of the city. He's an animal patrol officer. He's been working for the city of Isle Toms for seven years. He announced to me that he's going to retire. Uh, this is his second retirement. I've been bugging him for the last month, saying it's not too late, and I will say it again, it's not too late, John. <laughs> not too late, it's not too late. <laughs> but he said that uh, second retirement, there's no going back on that. He's uh, committed to going. Uh, we're going to miss John. He's been an integral part of the department over the last seven years. Uh, he's been a very valuable member, uh, not only to this department, but to the entire city, uh, going above and beyond, uh, doing the menial task of uh, many departments in the city. John will be sure, uh, surely missed, uh, and we will think about him often, although I don't understand why he wants to go north. <laughs> John, if you can come forward for me. A little memento of uh, the department. I'd like to say thank you for your service. Thank you, Chief. Consideration of the city sponsor. 
Dr. Dunn. And we have a request uh, for the Travel Channel to do some filming on the beach, and Emily's going to walk us through some of the details. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, the Travel Channel was originally planning to represent themselves tonight, but they had a shift in schedule, so they've given me the details of their shoot. Um, it's a one-day shoot on May 19th or 20th. Less than 15 people with basic uh, camera gear, no vehicles on the beach, no disruption that they uh, plan or are aware of to any of the visitors or the property. Um, it'll be based in Wild Dunes, but they are going to go down to the beach, and it's for a web series that promotes the latest travel gadgets on the market for the for the travel channel. Okay, so this is a request uh, for for just basically a two-day event uh, that we're shooting on 19th. Just, just one, one day. day. Either the 19th or 20th. Yeah, and they'll have just uh, 15, less than 15 people on the crew, two cameras, no vehicles. Okay, excellent. So and they've already provided us with their certificate of insurance, naming us as additional insurance. Okay, so this is the kind of publicity we, we need in filming. So, uh, can I entertain a motion to approve the special event? I'm going to be considering uh, the travel channel filming on the beach as the city sponsored the event. Second. Motion and second to any discussion. Do we have extra security to prevent Councilman Carroll from uh, <laughs> 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 photo bomb by Jim this, this Southern Comfort South? <laughs> That's good work. All right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on. Move some papers here first. Let me. Uh, Reports of any other citizens come. Let me start there. Just because we had those doesn't mean there aren't any other citizens that want to speak to us. None heard. All right. We'll move on to reports of standing committees. I'm not sure if the police department wants to say here and listen to all of this. We're entirely welcome. I should think of it. Existing counters are functioning and Stantec is pursuing with SCDOT to put the new counters in place. Talked about the status of the Stantec work on beach access, parking, and data collections. And as you know, we'll be having a meeting with them on the first to discuss this in, in great detail. I'm going to do business. Um, Chief Buchanan reported on the achievement that the police force made of the Kalia Law Enforcement Award. Uh, this year the city achieved the gold standard for the first time. The difference between the what we did, which I'll call the normal run-of-the-mill accreditation and gold standard, 
is that in the gold standard, we have already proved to them that our paperwork and all is in order. And they come out and actually interviewed citizens, council members, whoever wanted to talk to them, and, and we came through with, with flying colors. Um, and, and I would like to thank the chief, his entire department, and all involved for, for really putting us on the map in this one. I think we're ready to have another night. We're going to have a bail. And the police staff is coming back. And they're coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back. So don't you say. See how fast we react? Great response time. Very important. Reaction. city should be proud of what they went through to to get this award. It's a very, very nice ceremony. We were there with, I believe, 76 other agencies. And, and I will say that one of the agencies, since it's an international organization, was from Guadalajara, Mexico. And they had been working on their first accreditation for three years and were that close to getting it. And when they asked the police chief if he was going to be able to keep it up, he said, well, you know, there's another election coming up, and we're just hoping that the right people get elected. <laughs> so, so thanks to all of you good elected officials also. Chief, would you like to say a few words? Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I just want to say uh, a personal thanks to uh, Captain Kim Ussery, Captain Don Caldwell, uh, members of the department. Uh, the, this uh, award is not just... Uh, presentation to me and the, the command staff. This is a presentation to the entire police department and to the city of Isle of Palms. Uh, we'd, I'd also want to thank the uh, city council uh, for allowing us to go through this process. Uh, this is just another way for us to be able to show that we are meeting the highest standards in the law enforcement community. Uh, interestingly enough, there's uh, 628 agencies across the nation that are nationally accredited. Of the 628 agencies, 31 are represented in the state of South Carolina. Um, and we are one of the 31 and one of the 628. So we're part of an elite group that, have, that we put ourselves out there to be examined uh, and to show that we follow the standards. And um, this is the culmination of that. Now, I will say that uh, just because we got the award doesn't mean that we stop now. We have to keep going, and over the next three years, we'll be going through the same process again. So three years from now, we hope to get another award. Yeah, this is, uh, there's no end to this race. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just keep running. Yeah, I, Kim knows, everybody knows. Um, with that many accredited, you have to realize how many uh, agencies there are in the country, and only 600 or so have uh, taken the effort to go through this uh, discipline process. Of, of, uh, of rigorous inspection, inspection by outsiders of our entire processes, and, and seeing that we conform to national standards, it's, uh, it's quite, a, as you said, quite an achievement for the entire entire team. And, uh, we're proud of you, and, and uh, hopefully the rest of the citizens of the island uh, can see that also in the day-to-day -day efforts of our police department. So, thank you very much. And, and where are we going to display? That, uh, We've got a uh, wall of fame at the police department that we put it up on. Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's keep it uh, protected until it gets back to its home. So. I got this. You got it. <laughs> opportunities. The uh, police department is working on a new initiative which is coffee, coffee with the cop. They'll be meeting with uh, various groups, businesses, just having coffee with them and uh, getting insight into what they're doing. Uh, we did have one contract in excess of $10,000 and that was to technology support technology solutions for the budgeted purchase 
of seven surveillance cameras in the amount of $25,586.19. And I don't know if uh, to make a motion now or we can wait until the Ways and Means Committee report. We can do it now. Okay, I would make a motion that we accept this contract under state pricing for the surveillance cameras. Second. Motion and seconded. Uh, this has been well uh, discussed. We're replacing a whole series of cameras that have been in place for upwards of 10 years and adding a few more, hopefully to give us more input on traffic and flows as, uh, as it goes forward. And I know that you've been in discussion with DOT about how to make uh, one or more of the cameras available for uh, public use as well. So, Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, then we have the departmental reports. Uh, the fire department, Chief Graham reported that personnel responded to 47 calls, and 20, 24 of those were EMS calls. The average response time for EMS in March was 12 and a half minutes, which is pretty darn good. Um, and the chief's going to request the EMS be stationed on the island at least Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, and holidays over the summer, which we had uh, very good luck in getting them to do that last year. And we expect to continue the same thing. The fire inspector conducted 11 inspections, uh, several of which were at the new Harris Theater and the new businesses going into the island center. Uh, the chief and Patan Chief Maybach attended training in Columbia in conjunction with emergency management. Um, we had some repairs that needed to be done, a thermal in imaging camera, which brought our maintenance costs up a little bit. And personnel from both the Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island attended a meeting with staff from Consolidated Dispatch to make changes that are going to benefit both entities as the summer approaches. And at this time, the fire department is fully staffed. For the police department, Chief Buchanan related an incident on NC Court where a subject was to be found to be involved with a burglary as well as trespassing. Of course, he was arrested. Um, and they were able to tie him into some other burglaries in the area, so, which, which very often happens if we catch someone that's burglarizing somewhere, chances are it's probably been somewhere else. Um, on March 27th, we observed a number of city ordinance violations, including the discharge of fireworks and excessive noise, which goes along with fireworks. Subsequent investigation resulted in 28 individuals being charged with minor in possession of alcohol. One, one arrested for having quantity of marijuana and the responsible party for the rental property was charged with transfer of beer to minors. So, uh, as you can tell, we don't take underage drinking lightly, and we are very much watching our, our rental properties on the island. During the month of March, dispatchers responded to a total of 5,355 calls. Of that number, 4,068 were for the Isle of Palms Police Department. Officers had 395 traffic calls that resulted in 105 citations being written. They wrote 133 reports and made 76 arrests with 28 attributed to one, the one that one party had discussed earlier. From the loadability report, Chief stated there were 15 noise complaints in the month. There was one citation, 11 warning citations, and three were found to be unfounded. Our next meeting will be May 6th in the City Hall Conference Room at 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. Questions for public safety? All right, let's move on to Ways and Means Committee. Uh, we met at 5.45 for the evening of April 22nd. <laughs> Almost into the morning, but uh, we, we get through it. Um, all were present. Uh, we heard from our treasurer, and we are now three quarters of the way through the fiscal year. Uh, our expenditures are running at 71% of budget, and our revenues are at 74% of budget, so uh, that's good news. 
property tax revenue, well, we were hoping that we might even exceed budget. Looks like now we're going to be uh, working hard to meet our budget and so give us some revisions of our understanding of the assessor's office. Um, and and uh, we've already collected $4,098,000 so far in, uh, in those taxes. So, so far, we're, we're clopping along and should be all right for our uh, year end uh, property tax. Our tourism schedules, our municipal accommodations tax year to date through March is 9% ahead of prior year, and our hospitality tax is only 10% ahead of prior year. So, both of those are doing very well. Uh, there was no significant change uh, in our project schedules, and uh, we proceeded on. We, I'll make a, a motion to award a contract to LNL contractors in the amount of $77,990 to replace the City Hall generator with an additional $20,900 for a transfer switch if the transfer switch is uh, deemed to be necessary. Second. Like that is a motion second. Any discussion on this? This is the generator which will be put outside of this room. It will be uh, quieter. Uh, the stairs will have to be realigned, so the exit door will still be useful. Um, but it's something that's long needed. And hopefully, uh, will not have to serve us uh, in active duty, but uh, only as a standby condition. So, any discussion on this? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. We're going to put in a new generator. Thank you very much. We've already awarded the contract to Technology Solutions. Uh, we took up and had great consideration as the uh, Alpine's Water and Sewer Commission had offered us the opportunity to paint a logo uh, or anything else. Let your imagination go wild uh, on the water tower as it is being finished. Uh, it was, was discussed at uh, reasonable length, and we decided that we take no action and let the Water Commission finish their painting and, and leave it the light blue that it's always been and will blend into the scenery and you know, we'll have no logo up there. Partly because if you're coming to the Isle of Palms, you already know you're at the Isle of Palms. If we don't need to tell them that they're here. So, plus it's a fairly significant maintenance cost to, as we go forward. We took under consideration recycling services uh, for the beach. Uh, as you may recall, if you've been with us over the last few months, uh, we've been working with Charleston County to put recycling containers on the beach. Uh, that program is uh, structurally uh, in place. The question is how it was going to be paid for. In, in particular, Charleston County said that they were working on a scheme that would allow them to pay us for the maintenance of that uh, after in their next fiscal year, which is FY15, which doesn't kick in until July, and that if we want to do it prior to that, such as starting as soon as we can get the barrels out there for this season, then those finances would fall to us. Um, we consider that at great length, and the options, what happens if their budget isn't approved, etc. And we have taken the decision to proceed on, go ahead and put the recycling containers out there, and to um, take up the cost of $7,200 from our state accommodations tax uh, between now and, and July 1st for, for managing the recycling uh, container. So that should be going forward and we have uh, our staff and Charleston County has come forward and we'll be working to try and educate the public on, uh, on using the recycling containers only for recycling. It's an awful idea, but yeah, there needs to be some education that it's not just a container to throw anything in. Uh, even though we have single stream recycling, uh, we don't want diapers and, and the like. So uh, the more we can educate the public, the better off we'll be and the better use we can make of the recycling effort that uh, we're now going to start on the beach and we'll see how that goes. That's, uh, we're first in the uh, parade of uh, hopefully others that will follow us in, uh, in getting beach uh, visitors to recycle uh, all of their materials that they take down. Um, we considered uh, some experimental projects relative to lighting on Front Beach. Uh, this is a request trying to improve the safety and aesthetics of the lighting that we have down there. I, it was decided we didn't have enough information, we didn't have the right program to go forward uh, at Ways and Means, so it was referred back to the Public Works Committee to flush out more detail and come back with a more comprehensive plan, including
including uh, some estimate of reasonable budget. We then went into a workshop uh, on our budget for FY15. That's both our operating budget and capital budget. And I would like to say that we spent hours at this, and I'm not going to refresh every hour with you, but I would like to compliment council and staff for every committee, every member of council, uh, every staff member in their efforts coming up to Ways and Means contributed significantly to helping us uh, bridge a gap that we had to come forward with to, uh, to present a balanced budget, which we have and we'll take up later under ordinance uh, later this evening. But the, uh, there have been major uh, changes. Many things have been deferred. Uh, some things were deemed to be necessary and we're going forward with those. But everybody stepped forward and we had a very worthwhile uh, effort that evening. I'm going to ask the administrator, who didn't know I was going to do this, if she had anything to add to the, to the budgeting process. Well, first of all, this was a new adventure for us because we approached the budget from a totally different perspective than we had in the past in looking at revenues first before we looked at <coughs> expenditures and then also examining what the source of those revenues were. So, um, you know, we learned some things. It was an interesting process. Um, it did require more work than in years past on the part of um, staff members, in particular City Treasurer Debbie Suggs, put in countless hours in, um, in refining uh, numbers to, to give us the tools that we needed to go forward. And basically, we presented the, uh, the budget showing what we needed to balance it and provided Council with a whole menu of options for balancing the budget and we basically worked from that menu and going through every single page of the budget until we arrived at the document that we have tonight that contains all of those changes that were made at Ways and Means <coughs> for first reading. Uh, the budget can be further refined prior to second reading and each of the committees of council will be looking at that going forward. So it was a challenging but very positive experience. Okay, very good. Um, in the budgeting process, uh, I want to make note that uh, that we are going to recognize a one-time accounting correct, correction or recognition has to do with the timing of an insurance payment, which will allow us to uh, uh, to get closer by $150,855 to be precise. Uh, that's a one-time adjustment. Uh, therefore, in the future, we're going to have to close that gap uh, when we go into future years. And at that time, we uh, approved at Ways and Means the increase of the franchise fee from 3% to 5% from the South Carolina, South Carolina Electric and Gas. Um, we also considered uh, a reduction in the budget of part-time fire, uh, the amount budgeted, not necessarily the number of fire personnel in the part-time uh, aspect. We also considered uh, raising the franchise fee on Comcast and after review and second consideration we reverted back and uh, kept that at three percent uh, we moved on. So we also considered uh, raising the hourly rates at our kiosks of parking on Front Beach. We chose not to raise the rates but we'll consider keeping the kiosks, op op kiosks operational for the full 12 months of the year. That's something that the committee has to take up and consider, but that's something that uh, may be worthwhile for us to do in the future. So with that, uh, we concluded our, our uh, Ways and Means meeting, uh, having recommended a balanced budget, which we'll deal with later. Uh, the only other thing I want to report coming out of Ways and Means is, uh, to Council is that I have invited the Charleston Visit Bureau to come meet with us on May 20th and talk to us about the impact of their efforts on the island. So it'll be here on the 20th. So that's the Ways and Means Committee report. Any questions? Just Did I one. Miss no, you didn't miss anything. But just one thing. It was mentioned in Ways and Means, and I just think it's important for this venue. Uh, the city is planning a disaster uh -huh. expo uh, in conjunction with Sullivan's Island on May 21st at the Public Safety Building from 5 to 7. So uh, everyone help to pass the word uh, regarding that disaster expo. You know, uh, on the disaster expo, 
I turn around every time I'm there and I see members of council, I see former members of council, I see staff, but we need to get the citizens out and get them to be made aware of, uh, of what's in front of them in the, fake, in the event that we have a disaster looming in front of us. So I encourage everybody, all of you out there <laughs> watching, uh, please take time, uh, one or more from the family, please attend. You'll learn something every time you go about how to prepare and when to prepare and how to exit in the event we have to exit the island to, under, under emergency conditions. So it's, it's very beneficial. And, uh, don't think you, you know it all. That's my simple statement there. All right, let's move on to a Public Works Committee. Public Works Committee. I got it. <laughs> uh, all right, well. <coughs> The public works met on April 10th at 5.30. All members of the committee were present. We went through the normal department reports, reviewing uh, activity, trash pickup, recycling, etc. Uh, under old business, we, as every committee did, spent a lot of time on operating budgets and uh, looking for opportunities to you know, balance the budget and where is the best way to spend our, our taxpayer dollars. Uh, we also discussed the uh, recycling program, which came up in several meetings, and uh, just to add a little bit to what you know, the mayor has said with the last meeting. This is, this is a pretty interesting program and it's going to be, it's going to take a lot of education of visitors and renters uh, who visit the island to do things right. Not only with the recycling on the beach, but also we're changing recycled containers at the marina. So there's no longer that, you know, with the event of the single stream of recycling, we have an adequate way to take care of it and support recycling, which is good for our tax dollars and helps keep our expenses down. But it's important that uh, you know we can educate people and especially the renters so they do have a way to take care of uh, recycling for that. Uh, we also discussed uh, front beach lighting and um, we're looking at a way to just you know, add a little festive atmosphere to the um, front beach as well as uh, provide additional lighting for security reasons. And uh, with that, the meeting was adjourned, and the uh, next meeting is set for May 7th at 5.30. All right, very good. Any questions for public works? One question. Please. Uh, Mr. Mayor um, and co-chair of the uh, public works, when we give this information, I think the island residents will understand it well, and I think our vacationing guests will hear it from the rental companies. <clears throat> but the biggest bulk of people coming out here going to the beach are the day visitors, so we've got to find a way to get that information out to them about recycling on a beach. So I'm not sure if that's how we can do that. Well, we are working with the uh, with Charleston County's public information people so that they can assist us and, and of course their voice goes out you know to all of the county. Uh, they've got a pretty steady, in fact I hear from them almost daily on their Twitter feed um, of news and Emily is, is working directly with those folks so I'm sure that they will be able to help us Great. get in that work. There's no question there could be a gap. I think the citizens of Charleston County, single seam recycling is now part of the fabric. It's, it's virtually everywhere in the county. But we get visitors from Berkeley and Dorchester and Columbia and Lexington. We get them from all over for a day. And this may be a new uh, new thing for them. How you reach those folks, uh, you know, has to be worked out. It could be just a, a simple sign on the on the barrel for a while. There will be a sign. When Thank we, you. When do we expect that to go forward? Whenever we get the drums, we're yeah. talking. Right? We don't have an idea on that. <laughs> yes. The barrels get here. Yeah. Whenever the barrels get here. <laughs> and, and I think there was, the last time we talked, we were looking at at least 15 days to um, to three weeks for turn, turn around town on time on ordering the barrels. On, and get from once they're ordered to they're delivered. And once that happens, we're ready. Do you, do you think it'll be Memorial Day or before? I would hope. There is a small amount of work public works has to do before they deploy. Okay. All right. Is that sufficient? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And why don't you send us a notice when you do deploy them so that we know if you list them. Melinda can send it out if you tell her. Okay. Uh, Recreation Committee, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Recreation met on April the 7th. All council members were present. As opposed to my reading the minutes verbatim, I'm just going to touch on the highlights for us tonight. The adult softball season has started. The players love the new lights and the fencing. Um, adult three-on-three -three basketball, six-on-six soccer, table tennis is in full swing. 
The 16th annual half rubber tournament is scheduled for August the 16th. We'll have more on that in the next months. Youth baseball, excuse the pun, Mr. Mayor, that youth baseball is in full swing. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with pages three to four and fast start and all the way on up. Of course, there are a zillion other programs running. Girls spike night, ballet, gymnastics, taekwondo, tennis, yoga, and more. The 2014 taekwondo tournament had 71 participants from as far away as Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and California. So we're reaching out. The most recent riot, I meant the most recent school dance was on May the 31st, with 344 students attending. The last middle school dance will be held on Friday the May 30th. What time does that begin? I'm sorry? What time does that begin? Um, seven. 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 Okay. It's, it's a riot. We have it on the calendar. It doesn't have it. Have time. Recent special events include the Island Grawl and the annual Easter Egg Hunt. As we all know, Mother Nature had other plans for us for an island grow, but the future potential is incredible, not only for our residents, but for the visiting guests and for the day guests. This helps promote our community while at the same time promoting our commercial district. Mother Nature also threw us a curveball for the Easter egg hunt, but luckily the recreation staff had a plan B. In the next month's report, we'll report on the numbers um, for everyone who came there. But let me speak for everyone on council by saying a good job well done to our recreation staff. Here, here, here. <laughs> Upcoming special events include Music in the Park, which is this Saturday with Bluegrass Ensemble Sweet Potato Pie from 1 to 4. So grab your friends, grab your family members, blankets and lawn chairs, and come on out and enjoy the afternoon. That's this Saturday coming up, and the sun is going to be out. I was going to ask if there's a plan B. Yes, there is. Other upcoming events include the famous sand sculpting contest on June the 7th. All Camp Summershine sessions are booked up. And the City Employee Wellness Program is doing well with an average participation of six employees per, per session. And like everybody else, we were discussing our operating and capital budgets. The Recreation Department has used a finely sharpened pencil to reduce as much as possible. The only increase we have in the operating cost budget for this year is $2,700 to realign the gem floor, and it needs to be done. It was way past time. Other increases were those expenses beyond our control. Certain items in the capital purchases will be replaced only with failure, such as scoreboards and the HVAC system. Our big ball field is in need to be redone, completely redone. We looked at possibly deferring that for this year, but the director felt strongly enough that it needed to be done now, and she was willing to pull half of the $100,000 funds from the Recreation Building Fund, with the other half coming from the capital projects. Other areas of our cutting expenses, including the deferring of a $20,000 truck purchase, um, $30,000 for bleachers, lowering our estimate for a tennis court resurfacing by $4,000, uh, $5,500 for reception area seating and chairs, and last but not least, Donnie, you're hearing this, $1,400 for two additional ping pong tables. We're cut from the budget. So over $110,000 in savings from the recreation and, and budgeting. We discussed at great length the use of Facebook as a means to help get the word out about the recreation events and programs. There was a good debate from all directions that was decided that the city would need to work on a policy for the use of social media before we go too far. It was decided that this needed to uh, be more investigation. There was no miscellaneous business. Our next business is for the Cinco de Mayo at 5 p.m. That ends my report. Ooh. Yes, sir. A question. Um, you know, the Recreation Department does such a great job for the, the people of the island, but also the people off the island. And I posed the question, why is it that we cannot tap some of the hospitality funds to help support our Recreation Department? And I was told uh, that if it was the will of the council, we could. Well, we do. I mean, we, we do. part of the building. Was a 
thirty would anybody here? Or maybe she is here. At least thirty percent of the building is paid for by tourism. Mm -hmm. What about the programs? Uh, I can't speak. I don't think we do the programs. And yet we're, 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 we're providing a lot of those opportunities for people off the island. Where some of the special events are. They're from from state aid tax. Correct. State aid tax, not hospitality, is function is um, supported. Uh, supports a lot of the special events. Um, and and there are some tourism funds in our debt service, um, but I don't think it's hospitality money. I have to read it. But it is tourism money. And, but his question was specifically hospitality. hospitality. Oh. Mm -hmm. We can look at it and share with you what is done now, and if you think it needs to be more, we will deal with that too. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? All right, let's move on to personnel committee, please. Okay, the personnel committee met on April 10th with all members present, as well as staff Tucker, who's been in Copeland. The minutes of March 6th were approved unanimously. There were no citizens comments forthcoming. Under old business, the majority of our meeting was just like all the other committees, discussing the budget. And since we've covered most of that in, in ways and means, I'm not gonna reiterate what we went through, which is about nine or 10 pages of, of the report. So moving on under old business, um, we have taken on several projects that are long term. They're not going to be accomplished in one month or two months or even maybe six months. So one of those is the status of gathering wage ranges from other local governments. We're looking at how are our wage ranges compared to other municipalities. Um, this again, as I said, is an ongoing project and we need additional information before we're ready to bring anything to council. Uh, status of citywide um, staffing. The rec center, there are no full-time positions open. Um, they have hired two camp counselors. Police are opening for one patrol officer and animal control officer. Um, and also that the sergeant's position testing is in progress. Fire, public works, building, and go general government have no open positions, but we are in the position of hiring five DSOs and, and doing all of the testing that has to go um, with them. Under, um, again, old business, we're looking at the consideration of a citywide mechanic versus contracting out our uh, maintenance costs. Again, this is an ongoing project with additional data is needed, so we're not ready at this time to, to present anything. We also have the project of updating um, our citywide employee evaluation tool. And that, again, um, is being updated by the city administrator and the uh, department heads because they're the ones that have to use it predominantly. So we're asking them to look at new forms because, as I've told before, the forms we use now are not supported by our computer system. So we have to have a new form. Um, and we have another personnel committee meeting on this Thursday, and I look to getting some more information on that particular project then. Um, there was no new business under um, miscellaneous. We've been looking at um, the differences between strategic planning and our comprehensive planning. And that entails a great deal of work. In other municipalities, they actually have staff that only does that part of strategic planning. But we're, we're looking at that option because we, we need to have a more global view of what's happening on the island, not just attached to our year-by-year -year budget. So that, again, is another long-term project that we're looking into. Um, the next meeting is Thursday, May 1st, which is this Thursday at 10 a.m. Talk about turnaround. We had no executive session, and our meeting adjourned at 11.53 a.m. Our safety sweepstake winners in the building department is William Seabrook. Police Department, Amanda Postel, that we just introduced. Public Works, Willie Powell, and the Fire Department, Roger Eagle. Very good. Any questions for personnel committee? All right, let's move on to real property, please. Thank you, Mayor. Real property met April 8th. Uh, all members are present. In comments from the Marina tenants, Brian Burr again said that the uh, three tenants were working together on working with some problems, solving some parking. 
the problems. Uh, also, the marina has had a problem with uh, some boat bandits, and uh, they have started bo basically booting vehicles and locking boats and issuing warnings uh, in cases where someone is using the services without uh, properly paying for that. Under old business, uh, the Carmenar Bunch uh, Park, the base of the park has been cleared and volunteers have removed small plants to be replaced after the work has been completed. And uh, the city is waiting on a response from Charleston County on an entrance design. Uh, as far as water sports stock we have, uh, the work, work is done and uh, SCG finished up the electrical right before Easter weekend and we're up and running. So that's good news for that. Uh, other projects as far as uh, marina consulting projects at the marina. Um, Brian Bergen uh, to, basically has a design and is being completed by John Toscany uh, for a presentation of the uh, to city council at the May meeting and he's requested uh, that be on the agenda. Okay. Uh, John Schaefer is doing design work on the intercoastal docks and uh, Brian Bergen and John Schaefer also attended will be will attended a boating infrastructure grant meeting on April 22nd. And it must be noted, any additional funds that we could get for that for our marina operations, we need to have money in place in our budget for that uh, prior to that. So that, we need to keep that in mind. Um, we also uh, work through uh, real property committee budgets. Uh, under new business, um, we voted to uh, move uh, forward with the contract on the generator for City Hall, which was passed uh, by this committee, by full council. All marina rents are current, and uh, we also discussed recycling in the meeting, and also discussed at this meeting. So, our next meeting is set for May 6 at 5:30. Very good. Questions for real property? Very good. The boys uh, are happy that the docking is ready, and working. It looks good. It looks, it looks good. good. Yeah. They're going to be very happy. Okay, uh, you have in your possession reports from city boards and commissions. Any questions for them? All right, moving on. We move on to item 10, introduction of new bills. We have before you an ordinance 2014-03. I'll make a motion to amend, uh, to read and uh, move by title only an ordinance to raise revenue adopt a budget for the city of Alabama, South Carolina for the fiscal year July 1st, 2014. Ending July 30th, 2015. So, June 30th. Did I say June 30th? I said July. No, June 30th. I'll right. well, second that. All right, motion second. second. Any discussion? This has been the labor that we've gone through at Ways and Means, and we'll have time during the next month. We'll have a public hearing before we uh, move on at, uh, at our next uh, next council. So, discussion? I guess one thing, Mary. It was great to see the council worked so well this last week to pull this budget together. And, um, it, was, it was good to have a good old, you know, line by line, you know, type of budget session. Um, I was, I was, I was very um, thankful that uh, the treasurer was able to put some information, give the rest of council information on a number of expenses that the city has absorbed over the past many years right. without any type of tax increase, without any type of um, additional fees. And, um, but we're getting to a point now where we're going to have to start finding the sources of new revenue. And um, we will, whether it's next year or the year after, uh, definitely we're going to have to continue to take our belt and everybody did a good job on this. And, um, but the fact that we have quite a bit of um, unanswered expenses that we've, uh, that we've been able to absorb right. for a long time. And that's been going on for four or five years. We've been able, as you said, to, to weather the storm, but we're, the storm is about to take the blow is about to take the water. We can't have that happen. So. All right. Any other comments? Um, you know, Michael, it's, the budget is still a work in progress. Right, right, you know, in the next uh, Ways and Means, we're going to fine tune some things. I, I think uh, the city administrator provided a really nice document that we can use to look at trends and expenses over the last several years and identify some additional opportunities that we can have because, quite frankly, every dollar counts in our budget and uh, we, anywhere we can find an opportunity to save money for the taxpayers, it's, that's, that's critical. Okay, any other comments, Sandy? Um, in this process, because this is my first year, 
Um, does the budget go back to the department heads before the next Ways and Means so that they have an opportunity to we'll go back to each committee, which is in essence the department heads and the committee, uh, to go through it one more time to see if there's anything they have learned in the meantime to, uh, to push through. Then we'll deal with it again at Ways and Means, and then we'll uh, consider it again at, at uh, next month's council. One, one suggestion I would make is that for each department to look at the miscellaneous and contingency lines. I know that it's nice to have some monies there, but in some of the departments, I would really ask that they look at that um, to see if there's any shaping that could be done. Um, I know for a fact that you know it's it's nice to have that cushion, but in this year where we're really tapping into our our tourism funds, um, we need to be as tight as we possibly can. And I just ask the, the department heads, look at some of those types of things. The other thing is the non-capital tools. Um, if you look on, on the document that Debbie gave to us, you know, that is increased by, if I look correctly, 117%. That's a huge jump in, in the course of a couple of years. But again, it's nice to have these things, but in this particular year and going forward, so that we may not have to um, put taxes on our, our residents. Let's look at everything that we've got. Okay, I'll stay and, and just to remind council, and you know, council member Ferenc was not on council at this time, but when we changed our capital threshold and moved it up to $5,000 from 1000 that meant that many things that at one time had fallen um, you know, into the capital list as opposed to the operating list um, you know, got moved into the operating budgets under nine capital tools and equipment, and so that's what in part accounts for that switch um, and then, and the increase. But yeah. we will take you, a look at all look, of those things. You can look at the detail. What's in it? Debbie's got all the details. Mm -hmm. uh, department. Okay. One more thing, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes. If you don't mind, um, we call it a balanced budget, but you know, if we didn't have these funds to transfer monies out of, we would not have a balanced budget. And we are at the point now where we're running out of money. We've got two or three years left, if I'm not mistaken, where we can do this, and then we're in serious trouble. So we've got to change what we're doing in this city. We can't continue spending money the way we're spending money. So well, I, I, we spend money to provide services for the citizens, and we're not going to change that. Yeah, I, I, I hear you, but you know, again, we're we were depleting our funds. We've got to find ways to, as we said, save money and. and and cut expenses because the well is soon to run dry, as she said just a few minutes ago. Okay. Also, um, Mr. Mayor, I yeah. think that in looking at um, other revenue sources, it became really clear that our day visitors are only contributing at 8%, Correct. whereas our residents are at, I don't know, remember that percentage, but I do remember the rentals was like 47%. All the other percentages are well in line with the services that they're receiving, but we have to find some way to have our, our day visitors become more responsible in helping us. Um, and, and I don't know what that program might look like, um, but I think that is one venue that we really need to look at seriously. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All in favor of first reading, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. We now are up to two proclamation. Proclamation. Are you in good voice today? I am in good voice. Uh, I have double checked the parliamentary procedure on these things, and um, it is not necessary that they be read in oh. full. It is necessary for us to read the resolutions and to appropriately pass them. But I'm happy to read them. You guys know I don't mind reading them. But I can give you a summary. Well, if, let's do that. If, if, that um, if that would work. The notes are good. Yeah, the, the proclamation is in support of Lupus Awareness Month. It details out the impact of lupus, the various types of lupus that exist, um, and organizations that assist in, um, in helping people that are going through the process of lupus. Um, it pro proclaims this day, April 29th, 2014, um, as, as the day of um, awareness for lupus, and then the whole month of May as Lupus Awareness Month in the city of Alabama. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next proclamation. Okay, the next one is in support of uh, Police Week. 
Um, and this proclamation talks about the number of law enforcement officers that serve in the United States um, and the numbers of those that are killed in the line of duty or severely um, injured. It speaks about the law enforcement memorial in Washington, D.C. Uh, and then that the crux of it is that there's a National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund uh, and the 26th Annual Candlelight vigil, vigil on the evening of May 13, 2014, and that's part of National Police Week. Um, it designates May 15th, May 15th as the Police Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all the fallen officers and their family. I'll make a motion to... Second. Motion and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. Very good. I'm not sure we saved much versus uh, <laughs> reading it. But. Didn't want short change. All right. Um, no other miscellaneous business. Our next meeting is 7 o'clock on Tuesday, yeah. May 27th. Motion. Well, we have a grand opening tomorrow morning. Uh, right. 8 o'clock tomorrow is the ribbon cutting at the Harris Teeters, uh, uh, be there. Uh, then, uh, weather, uh, weather should be fine. Uh, we'll let the police department work on that part of it. But, uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll be there in fine color and good spirits. So. Did you see the business hours? Six a.m. till midnight. Midnight. Good, good luck, huh? guys. <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn. So okay. made. Move. Sorry. All in favor? Please say aye. 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 All right. We're out of here. You went on record as saying the weather is going to be good, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I know.